So when you encounter a patient who has a rash that's not responding to therapy for presumed much more common diagnoses, such as atopic dermatitis, allergic contact, derm, et cetera, um, they've been treated with topical steroids. Perhaps in some settings, they've been treated with other um, lymphocytic infiltrate blockers, and they just have not shown a, a, an expected clinical response, then the clinician starts to expand their differential. And sometimes that differential then expands to include things like cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, which then appropriately leads to a skin biopsy. And then you get a report back that says, you know, lymphocytic infiltrate cannot rule out mycosis fungoides. Um, however, that is not sufficient to even really raise that diagnosis with the patient particularly in the setting of a, a plan to pass them on to a, a consultant with a CTCL um, subspecialty clinic. So when you're reviewing these pathology reports, it's really critical that at least three to four of the required diagnostic criteria are present. Number one, there should be a lymphocytic infiltrate involving the epidermis. That lymphocytic infiltrate should be atypical. You should be able to um, contact the pathologist and they should verify that the, the cells under the microscope, maybe if they don't show the pathognomonic cerebriform nuclear contours, they at least have a consistent degree of atypia in the infiltrate. And that's really necessary to even start to consider something in the T-cell dyscrasia realm. Importantly, you want to see an absence of spongiosis. So many of these patients, they just have really aggravated atopic derm and you can get a little bit of lymphocyte atypia in that setting, particularly with lots of trauma, you know, from scratching and rubbing habitually. But if you're not seeing that you've got epidermal atypical lymphocytes and there's plenty of spongiosis, it makes it very unlikely that the primary process is dyscrasia. Um, additionally, you want to um, look for, you know, ideally potromicroabscesses, which goes to a certain constellation of lymphocytes in the epidermis. And then when you look at the immunohistochemistry, which is not automatically ordered by a lot of um, commercial derm path outfits, you want to start to further define that lymphocytic infiltrate. You want to see that those atypical lymphocytes are CD4 positive or if the lesions clinically are hypopigmented, maybe CD8 positive. But you really need to have that dermatopathologist report to you, is there loss of CD7? There should be at least 50% reduction in CD7 if you're going to consider it a T-cell dyscrasia or an early evolving mycosis fungoides. Um, and then furthermore, you know, for more advanced cases, you can start to also request um, specific comments on CD30 positivity, CD52 positivity, et cetera. But you've really got to see that some of these critical elements on the immunohistochemistry are present. And also, I should mention that you should ideally get the CD4 to 8 ratio reported. And that 4 is normal. Anything under 4 really shouldn't be worried about a T-cell dyscrasia. If you start to get near the 8 to 10 range on that CD4 to 8 ratio, that's when the pieces start to fit together that perhaps there is a T-cell dyscrasia in play.